Okay, so now we're doing the integumentary system. Um, this would be 7.3, I believe, on your chapter 7. So we're in section 3. Not too long, but things should start getting a little bit interesting for you. Alrighty. Um, this is Thursday. You guys need to take notes on this, and you need to make sure that you hand them in to Mrs. L before you leave today um, so she can see that students... Um, actually participated and actually did what they were supposed to do. Okay, which I know all of you do. I got the dogs up here with me, so they're gonna probably gonna get loud here in a little bit. So, the integumentary system is another name for the skin and its structures. Okay, this this integument or the skin is called a membrane because it covers the body, like a membrane covers an organ. But it's also called an organ because it contains several different kinds of tissues. Remember in the beginning of, um, I think it was maybe even just this last, when we talked about cells, I said cells, when there's a bunch of cells together, um, they form a tissue. Tissues form organs and organs form systems. I talked about that earlier this year. So it kind of goes back to what I was saying. So it's called a membrane because, because it covers the body. It's called an organ because it contains several different types of tissues. And it's called a system because it has organs and other parts that work together to serve a particular function. Okay, so it's all those things. Aren't you lucky? On an average, Adult, excuse me, the skin covers more than 3,000 square inches of the surface area, and it accounts for 15% of your total body weight. Okay? There's three layers. There's the epidermis, the epidermis. There's the dermis, and then there's the subcutaneous layer, or you can call it the hypodermis. You'll see that when we talk about anatomy and physiology, there's more than one term that can be used to describe something. The epidermis, epi, means above, right? It's the outermost layer of the skin. It's what we're seeing on each other, okay? My, you have a fine-looking epidermis. Your epidermis is quite tan. Um, it's made out of five small layers, okay, where there's no blood vessels or there's no, no cells. The outermost layer is the stratum corneum, okay? These cells are constantly being shed and replaced by the new cells from the stratum germinativum. Okay, and that's the innermost layer. So your outermost layer of the epidermis, called the stratum corneum, is constantly being shed and replaced. Isn't that lovely? Doesn't that sound delish? Reminds me of Goldfinger. Okay. The dermis is also called the true skin or the corium. I think in years past, true skin um, for dermis has been on a test. Hint, hint, you might want to star. The dermis layer has all the elastic connective tissue, the blood vessels, the lymph vessels, the nerves, the um, involuntary muscle, sweat and oil glands, and hair follicles are dermis. Okay. It also contains papillae. Papillae, here's a nice little factoid which fit into ridges on the stratum germinativum of the epidermis. Here you go. The ridges are unique to everyone. Can you guess what they form? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Anyone? Take a guess. They're your fingerprints. Okay? They're your fingerprints. And if you guessed it, yay for you! Okay? The subcutaneous or the hypodermis, come on, come on, this is rosy. The subcutaneous or the hypodermis is the innermost layer of the skin. It's made up of elastic, fibrous, connective tissue along with adipose tissue. What does adipose mean? Fat, okay? So if I were to say to you, what, when you look at me or you look at the person sitting next to you, what layer of skin are you looking at? And you should say your epidermis. Oh, should, I think he likes, or she likes the, the, what do you call it? Like the fuzzy on here. You should be saying the epidermis. 
And the next question says, what layer of the skin contains blood vessels, nerves, and hair follicles? Uh, I'll give you a hint. It's not subcutaneous or hypodermis. And it's not epidermis. So you're right. It would be dermis. You guys are so smart. Um, there's two main types of glands. We have sudoriferous glands. Those are our sweat glands. And then we have sebaceous glands, and those are oil glands. Sweat glands are pseudo auriferous. I don't know why I'm having a hard time phonetically. These are coiled tubes that extend through the dermis and open on the surface of your skin at pores, your sweat glands. Okay. It's important for you to know that sweat is odorless. Okay. If you stink when you sweat, it's because of the bacteria that's on your skin and it's eating the sweat. Okay. Isn't that pretty? I know right now some of you are going like, ooh, ooh. But that's true. Oil glands, um, the sebaceous glands are oil glands and they open up into the hair follicles. And they produce sebum. Sebum. That's an oil that keeps your skin and hair from becoming dry and brittle. It's what gives it its nice, flowing, shiny hair, okay? Um, it acts as an antibacterial, antibacterial, and an antifungal secretion, okay? Can anyone think of why? Like I can hear you. Um, well, think about it. All right, think about it. Your skin has lots of functions, lots of functions. Number one, it protects us. It protects us from pathogens, disease-causing organisms. It prevents us from UV rays. It protects us, not prevents us, I'm sorry, from UV rays. It um, provides moisture, okay? It keeps moisture in to prevent the deeper tissues from drying out. So we don't look like the old lady and what about Mary? Um, it gives us sensory perception and responds. We can respond to pain, pressure, temperature, and touch. Okay? So that's a function of the skin. So it protects us. It helps us to feel different sensations. Our skin also helps to regulate our body temperature. We can retain heat. We can lose heat. And it does this through dilation and constriction of our blood vessels. Remember, our arteries are our blood vessels, and they are made of, can you guys think of what kind of muscle tissue? Mm -hmm. Smooth muscle. Smooth muscle. Smooth muscle, it, it gives us the ability to constrict and to dilate. And when our body has a high temperature, our arteries dilate, they get bigger, okay? So the blood can come to the surface. And then when we're cold, they constrict, okay? And it helps make us shiver. And we'll learn more about that, I think, later on in here. It also helps store. It stores fat. It's the lovely cottage cheese that we see um, on certain areas of our body. Not saying that I have any, okay? Just saying. Sometimes it stores fat there on the subcutaneous layer. It also helps to store glucose, water, vitamins, and salts. You know it stores salts because when you're sweaty and you lick, you lick your skin. I'm not saying I do, but when you lick your skin after you sweat, um, and you and you're getting the shedding, no, you taste salt. You taste salt. Um, if you have never done that, try it. It's gross, but try it. Absorption. Our skin also absorbs. We can absorb medication. How many of you guys have um, parents or grandparents that have tried to quit smoking and they have the nicotine patch? Okay, that medication is absorbed through their skin. We have patients who have had cancer and they need pain patches because they're in pain those around their skin. And then you might have grandparents that have high blood pressure 
and they wear nitro, a nitro uh, paste, nitro paste on their, on their uh, chest or on their back or on the arm. Okay, it's a little patch. So you, that might be familiar, but our body does, our skin does absorb medication. Excretion, we excrete things when we, when we sweat, we get rid of excess water, it helps get rid of excess heat and salt. Again, uh-uh, lick. And then our skin helps us to produce vitamin D. Okay. So the question here is spending short periods of time in the morning sun can be beneficial. Um, how can it be beneficial? Because we absorb vitamin D. Vitamin D, um, help, we help produce vitamin D through this, this, the, uh, the sun. The excretory function of the skin allows the body to eliminate excess. Can you think about it? Think about it for a while. Okay. I'm going to stop here at skin color pigmentation. Okay. And um, I'll pick up on Monday where we left off. Okay. So you guys finish that. And um, that's on slide nine. So there's 29. So that'll, that gives us a nice brief introduction. I will hand out or you should have gotten, Wednesday you should have gotten your your uh, workbook pages for that. And your workbook pages are due today. Okay, well, um, I hope you guys have a nice week without me. And that um, you have a nice weekend. You have a nice day off of uh, EdTech. And we'll see you on Monday. And don't forget about your tests. You have a test on Monday. You have two tests on Monday. One on body planes, two on medical terminology. All right, and I'll try to remember to do a nine, remind 101. I was going to say Reno 911, but you know what I mean. All righty, have a good weekend. Bye.